Welcome to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. If you're on a mission to be more frugal with both your time and money, you're in the right place. In this podcast, we talk about topics that help enhance living a frugal lifestyle. The goal is to save time and money where we can so that we can use the rest on what matters most to us. We talk a lot about both time and money management so that we can waste as little as possible on both. We do this while also embracing a progress over perfection mindset. If that sounds good to you, then please stick around for the latest episode right after a few quick words from our sponsor. Hi everyone, welcome back to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. Today, we're gonna talk about budgeting your time and being frugal with your days, just like you would be with your money. Kind of thinking about how to make sure you're getting the most out of the money, not the money, the time you have, just like you would with the money you have. But before we get into the topic, I just wanted to read, I got another um, rating and review on Apple Podcasts, which I'm always kind of begging for. So I was super excited. I'm always excited when I get another one because it's supposed to really help with um, you know having them put the show out for more people to see. So this review was from Clickerma. And um, it says, so helpful and inspiring. I look forward to Lola's podcast every week. Her meal plans are simple, full of easy recipes and practical tips for making mealtime a breeze. She's very relatable, responds to her listeners and makes you feel like she's been your friend for years. So thank you so, so much for writing that. Um, Like I said, I do check, like I constantly check to see if I have another um, rating or review because they're infrequent just because my audience is still relatively small and Um, you know, it is difficult to get ratings and reviews. So thank you so much for doing that. And if anyone else has a chance or the time, um, I'm working really hard to try and grow this show. um, And those ratings and reviews do really help. So if you have a minute and you haven't already done so, if you wouldn't mind writing a rating and review, but thank you again to Clickerma for putting that really nice review. So anyway, so like I said, today I wanted to talk about Um, kind of thinking about your time, budgeting your time like you would with your money. So there are things we can do to increase the amount of money that we bring in so that we can have more to put towards the things that we love. But unfortunately, we cannot make more time, so we need to be even more careful with how we use it. But if we put some effort into making the most of our time, we can often accomplish things that we wouldn't have even thought were possible. And, you know, just like we might find we're wasting money when we really start to track our spending, the same can be said about time we might be wasting. So, you know, there's things we often have to cut out of our financial budget so that we have enough money to spend on the things that we value. Sometimes we might have to do the same exact thing to get rid of excess things in our schedule so that we have the time for what we want to be able to do. So. Obviously, it's not something that can be perfected in an instant, just like your budget, but by starting somewhere and making little changes, you will see that you can probably find some more time in your day to do little things that are important to you. Even if it's only a little bit of extra time, it'll still have a positive impact on your life. So what you want to do is really just kind of start by thinking about what is most important to you. What would you like to be doing more of, but often tell yourself you don't have time for? When you're budgeting your time, um, it's not about being able to jam in as many tasks as you possibly can. It's about really making sure that you have time to be doing what you want to be doing with your time. You wanna feel good about what you did with your day. I'm sure all of you have had some of those days like I have had where you know, at the end of the day, we're just like super happy about the things we did or what we got done or you know, we felt like we really made good use of your time. So. The thing is, is when we can be more intentional about what we're doing with our time, we can have more of those days that leave us feeling really great about what we had done. So when you're, when you're starting to um, kind of think about how you're using your time and, and trying to kind of budget your time and figure out what you wanna spend more time on, it's really important to be realistic or you're definitely gonna be let down with the results because most of us obviously have a certain amount of time that's gonna be taken up by priorities no matter what. So unless your plan is to become completely irresponsible for the things that are required of you, um, you're gonna have a limited amount of time to work with. 
So of course that doesn't mean um, you can't take a look at your responsibilities to see what might be able to be eliminated or delegated or cut back on. Um, you definitely can do that. Um, but if you, if you feel like the responsibilities you have are somewhat reasonable, then you really only have that excess time to work with. So it's important to acknowledge the time that your responsibilities take up so that you can set realistic expectations on what you can actually fit in um, for your goals and other activities that you wanna be doing. So as you know, when we budget money, we usually have some things in the budget that we know will have to be cut if something more urgent comes up. Maybe if we find out we're spending more money on groceries, we might have to cut something else to make up the difference. Now that's actually what I'm trying to figure out for myself right now. Um, but I would guess that many of us have more on our to-do list than we can ever reasonably accomplish in a reasonable, reasonable amount of time. So we have to really take time to think about what the current priority is and we might have to cut some of those other things out in order to make room for those priorities. You might wanna take a look at your to-do list or your like things that you wanna do, not just like your regular tasks, like I have to do the dishes or do laundry or things like that, but other things that you want to be working on and maybe just pick the top two or three um, things that you'd really like to be making progress on. Maybe you can complete them, maybe you just do a little bit depending on how involved the task is and then you really need to let go of the other things. Don't think about them. You have them on your list, so you're not gonna forget about them, but there's nothing we could do to create more time. So if you're working on one thing and thinking about all those other things that you have to do also, it's just gonna cause stress. And then it, it also impacts how much you can focus on what you did choose to work on. So once you've chosen your priorities, you really wanna try and stick to them and know that you can get to those other things at another time. But if you find that something is still really like bothering you and just kind of nagging you that you're not working on it um, because you're not putting time to it, then maybe you need to reconsider your priorities. Maybe that thing is really your priority and something that you chose can be wait, waited on until later. And when you're budgeting your time, just like we include money in our budget for things that we enjoy, um, it's not just about paying bills and building up savings. You know, we might include money in the budget for dining out or taking a trip or things like that. When we budget our time, we also need to make sure we include those types of things in our time budget. So including time for resting and having fun. And while I love to be productive and check things off my to-do list, I don't wanna spend every minute of every day just being productive. I wanna have time to take some time off and just have fun. So by planning how you, how you use your time, um, you'll feel even better about taking those rest times because you'll know that you got some progress done on important things and then you could just relax and enjoy your time and not feel like you should be doing something else. One of the things that I think is really important too with budgeting our time is um, planning what you're gonna do if you have some time off. So if you have like a long weekend or you have a week off or you know whatever the case may be, it's good to kind of come up with a general plan on what you're gonna do with that time. It doesn't have to be rigid. It doesn't have to be all about working. It could be going to a park, seeing a movie. Maybe it might be reorganizing a closet or sorting through seasonal clothes. It might be making some appointments or it could just be sitting in a chair and reading for hours. It doesn't matter what you decide to do with your time but you just kind of want to make sure that you have some type of plan on what you want to do. Because when you decide what you want to do, you'll feel good about what you got from the day, whether that was just having a long relaxing day or if it was getting some chores done or whatever it was. It's just sometimes when we have time, we feel like we have so much time that we could just kind of like wander around, maybe pick up a thing here or there, scroll on our phone, and just kind of like not really get into much of anything and just kind of waste the time away. And then you don't really feel like you kind of got out of that time off that what you would have liked to get out of it. So really just kind of try and think about um, what you might want to do with that time. So something else we could do too to help us with budgeting our time a little bit better is to track time, like track the time um, that it takes to do certain things. 
sometimes we might think certain tasks take either more or less time than they actually do. Just like we might think we're spending more money or less money on certain expenses until we actually start tracking it. So if you kind of track how long it takes to do certain tasks, it'll give you a better understanding of how much time you have to work with for other things you're trying to fit in. It's really difficult to make adjustments to manage your time better if you really don't know where it's going. So of course, you do not have to time everything we do and and know exactly how long it it takes to do every single thing that we do in our lives, but it can be helpful to know like about how long it takes to do certain things like load and put away the dishes or clean the bathroom or put away laundry or clean a pet's cage and any other of those recurring tasks that you do on a regular basis because you know you're going to have to do those um, all like there are things that you just always have to do so if you um, know how long they take you'll know that that chunk of your day is already allocated to those and there's not going to be anything else you can fit in and by knowing how long something um how much time something's going to take up, you're not going to plan to do three hours worth of tasks in a two hour time slot. So if, if it takes you, you know, if you have to be somewhere at a certain time in the morning, say on a weekend, you have a, an appointment like today, I have a ser- car service appointment at 11. I'm not going to get up and plan to do something um, two hours before my appointment that really would take me three hours and then I'll be in the middle and have to stop. So just kind of knowing how long certain things take to complete can really be helpful in kind of um, budgeting out your time so that you know um, how much time you have available to do other things that you want to get done in the day. So another um, tip for, I don't know if it's really budgeting your time, but kind of making sure you can kind of plan out how you're going to do those things that you planned for um, is block scheduling. I've also seen it referred to as time blocking. Um, But basically what you do with block scheduling is you kind of section off your day into time frames and you schedule what you're going to do in those time slots. So of course you don't want to get over ambitious and schedule out every minute with accomplishing goal related tasks. You still need to shower, cook, eat and rest. Um, But block scheduling works really well because you can make progress on several things by devoting a period of time in your day to each thing that you want to work on. So of course you do have to have some discipline and stop yourself at the end of the time slot because the whole idea is to just devote a certain amount of time to one thing and then move on to something else because you wanna make progress on various things throughout the day. So um, one thing too though is you do wanna also make sure that when you're kind of setting this type of schedule um, that you wanna consider like how your body operates too. Like for me, I'm a morning person, so I don't wanna do anything that requires more than like the smallest amount of energy after dinner. So for me, I wouldn't have any time frames blocked out in the evening because I know I won't do it. I really love block scheduling because I know that I can focus on like what I've planned for the time block and I don't have to worry about other things that I wanna get done that day because I know I already put them in a, future time slot later in the day. So it's like you kind of pick your priorities, like what do you want to get done today? And then you plot them out when you're going to work on them. That way, when you're working on one thing, you're not thinking about the other things in your back of your mind, like when am I going to get to those? Because you already know when you're going to get to them because you already have them um, slotted in a certain time frame for that day or for later in the week. And then the last tip I have for budgeting your time and kind of using your time wisely is don't be a perfectionist. This applies to so many things, but it definitely does apply to with time management because you can waste a lot of time trying to get things just right without a whole lot of extra benefit. When you are, um, when you kind of exhibit perfectionism um, tendencies, you wind up, um, I'm not saying this right, but when you kind of are, <laughs> when you, when you, Sorry, I got to start that over. I just can't think how I'm trying to say what it is. But basically, when you try and be a perfectionist and you want to um, make sure that everything is done exactly the right way and you don't start until you know exactly the right way to do it, it makes you procrastinate because you want to get something done perfectly. And if you don't know the way to get it done perfectly, then you'll just not do it at all. So this can have this can waste a lot of our time because if we sit around thinking about how to get something done the right way, we're just sitting thinking, we're not doing. So it's better to have something done not perfectly than to not have it done at all. 
So just moving on and getting something done rather than wasting time trying to figure it out the best way is so much better because you can always figure it out as you go along and make it better as you go along, but don't just stop and wait until you have the best way to do something. So that's it for today. I hope that this maybe gave you some inspiration to find some time in your day to do more of the things that you'd really like to be working on. Um, And just um, one last thing, of course, it doesn't have to be tons of time. I didn't really mention this in in the episode, but even if you just squeeze in like 15 minutes to work on something, you're still making progress on something that you might not have otherwise done. So just try and see how you could use your time a little bit better and where you might have some of those time wasters that you can use for something that would um, be, be more working towards the things that you really enjoy in your life. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you here next week. So thank you for checking in for this podcast episode and don't forget you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Lola's Frugal Life, And you can find a blog post for most of my episodes and definitely all of my meal plan episodes at lolasfrugallife.com. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash Lola's Frugal Life. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see you're listening. Also, if you can please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, those ratings and reviews are what help the show come up better in search results so that other people can find this podcast. So that will really help me in growing my audience. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have an awesome day.